Okay, so in this video, we're going to go over how to convert emails into meetings. So this is where we're going over some email responses for people that come back that don't respond, that do respond. How should we approach our uh, responses as far as getting back to uh, the businesses that get back to us that are interested in learning more? When it comes to converting emails into meetings, one of the things you have to understand is that one of four things are going to happen whenever you send an email. It's always going to happen no matter what. And the first one is the prospect is going to respond positively, okay? And they're going to ask for a meeting. They're going to respond back and say, hey, you know, I want to know more. How can you help me? What can you do for me, right? Or number two, they're going to respond asking for more information. Yeah, hey, can you send me some information about what you can do or how does it work, right? And we have very precise and specific responses that get people past this and get them to actually book an appointment with us, right? Because um, there's really no reason to just send over information via email, right? Because then the ball is in their court. You want to maintain that curiosity, maintain that alpha position, okay? So number three, the prospect does not respond to the email, okay? And this is for whatever reason, right? They may be busy, they got distracted, maybe they read it and they were, you know, looking to respond back. It just slipped their mind, right? And it happens a lot. I mean, you'll be surprised on the third and the fourth email, you'll get businesses that come back to you and say, hey, I really appreciate you reaching out. Unfortunately, I, you know, was busy or I was away or I read your email and I was going to respond, but I lost track of time. You know, whatever that may be, right? Uh, people will thank you. Uh, because you are being persistent and inevitably there's going to be some that get upset that you're emailing them you know three or four times but those are very few and far and in between and if you're using the emails that I have in this program for you right that I have been tested and get results then you're going to minimize the number of people that come back and even you know get upset at you for sending multiple emails right and so number four they're going to respond by saying that they're simply not interested and we have a precise response for this as well and so if the prospect comes back and they respond with a day and time that they're available for a meeting then this is where we want to ask them hey what's the best number to reach them and that you're going to send them an actual calendar invite or send them a calendar invite and respond to the email letting them know. So here's a response, okay? Hi John, great hearing from you. What's the best number to reach you for our call? Once you send that over, I'll go ahead and send you over a calendar invite. Looking forward to chatting with you soon. Thanks, Juan, okay? This is when they respond back and they say, yes, I'm interested in having a call at this time, or are you available at you know Tuesday at 3 p.m.? If you have availability, this is the response that you would uh, send back to them, okay? And then email response number two here. This is where um, you guys have agreed upon a time, okay? And you say, great hearing from you. I just sent you over a calendar invite for Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you have any questions in the meantime, or if there are any changes in scheduling, feel free to send me a note. Thanks, Juan, okay? Now, this is after they respond back and they say that, hey, they're interested and they come back to you with some times um, that they're available, okay? Now, if a prospect does not propose a time, you wanna respond back giving them options, okay? You wanna give them two different days with three different time slots. You wanna make this as easy for them as possible to actually schedule an appointment with you, right? You wanna lower their resistance so they don't have to think about it, right? and show them that you're flexible in case the time slots do not fit their schedule, right? So here's an example email. Hi John, great hearing from you. Here are a couple times that worked for me this week. Tuesday, Thursday, or Thursday, two different times um, on this day right here, and then this one right here. So two days, and then you want to have one day be uh, two different times, and then one day be one time right here, okay? Go ahead and pick a time that works best for you and I'll send over a calendar invite. If none of these work for you, let me know and we can work around your schedule, right? Here are the reasons why prospects are typically not going to respond to your email. Your email got lost in their inbox. Remember, people are getting tons of emails every single day. 
That's why with our emails, we are customizing it. We're personalizing them. We are asking questions. We're like having a normal conversation versus those other emails that are being sent out there by other marketing agencies that are just pitching products, right? Pitching services. We are not like them. We are digital marketing agency elite consultants and we have normal conversations via email, right? The second reason why they don't respond is that they were going to, but they forgot or got distracted. This is a big one here because I'll notice that, and you can see in your metrics, that people will open the email, but they won't respond. And then third or the fourth email, they'll respond back saying, hey, you know what? I read your email. I was going to respond, but I got pulled away to another task, right? Whatever that may be. And then number three, they had other priorities at the time. Perhaps they were involved uh, in a particular meeting or they were doing something that didn't allow them to respond and then email got buried, right? And then number four, they didn't read your email fully and didn't realize the value that you can deliver. This is where a lot of people get it wrong, where they'll send an email and it's a pitch. And so sometimes people will read an email and not get past the first or second sentence and for whatever reason they didn't see the value and that's okay right you have to understand that this is all numbers game the more people that you can reach out to the more prospects that you can you know have in your pipeline the more clients you're going to be able to bring on board because some prospects are just never going to become clients right in the first place and so that's okay understanding that uh, you know only some of them are going to respond back and out of those that respond back you get on a call with them and you know, only a small percentage of those you're going to close. So understanding that will make a world of difference for you. And so we have here, uh, when prospects ask for more information. So let's say somebody comes back to you and says, can you send me some information about this call or about whatever you're talking about before we have a call? And so we can say, hi John, great hearing from you. Now we've helped businesses like yours grow by Facebook ads, if you have a unique mechanism here, even better, Google ads, whatever that may be, right? But that's just a small fraction of what we do. More importantly, for us to see if there's really a good fit here or a fit to work together, it'd be best if I can understand your situation better. Figuring this out shouldn't take much time. Do you have 10 minutes to hop on a quick call over the next few days, right? Nice and simple response here. We don't want to send them information because then the ball's in their court, they're never going to respond back. There's no reason to, right? And we don't just want to send them, you know, information nonchalant, right? We want to first even see if there's an opportunity for you guys to work together. If there's, you know, synergy there, right? If there's a connection. And so that's why being able to get them on a call is what is most important. Okay, coming down here. When they say not interested. This is a very simple response here where we can kind of figure out, okay, well, what's the reason, right? Thanks for getting back to me. Any particular reason why this isn't a good fit for you right now or a good fit? And then we give our reason. The reason I ask is because some of our clients felt the same way until we were able to educate them on the power of Google ads or Facebook ads. Or you can say we were able to get them results using the power of Facebook or Google, right? And then down here, I'm happy to send over a one page case study on results we've been able to achieve if you'd like. Uh, now we have a video going over where to get case studies if you do not have any. So very easy for you to find a case study that you can send over, preferably to have it be in the same niche, if not niche in the same industry. So if you're working for, let's say, home services companies and you are working with a landscaper and you're trying to get a you know fence remodeling company, right? That could be the same, same thing as uh, in the healthcare space. If you're working with like pain management doctors or plastic surgeons, right? And maybe you work with the dentist, any one of those in the healthcare field should be just fine. Obviously, if you can get one that is precise and very niche specific, that will be better. However, just having one in the you know actual field, healthcare, construction, home services um, would suffice. So that's gonna be it here for being able to convert emails into meetings and we'll see you on the next one.